And we welcome you into episode four of the best podcast available draft uh, series, I guess you could say, presented by our great friends at Key Private Bank. Key Private Bank is at the forefront of helping affluent families take a comprehensive approach to building, managing, and protecting their wealth in any market environment through objective advice and personalized solutions. Glad to have Key Private Bank on board. I'm Jason Gibbs alongside Andrew Gribble. It is our free agent preview show. Obviously, a lot has already happened. A lot is going to happen. Things are going to be fluid over the coming days as we move closer to March 17th. But the draft really takes to the back burner here, Gribble, over the next 10 days as free agency comes to the forefront. And first and foremost, we finally have a salary cap. And that salary cap number, $182.5 million, down from last year when it was 198.2. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty significant drop, all things considered, but I I just don't think it's as bad as anyone ever thought of it if when we were looking at the the lay of the land at this time last year. So I I think that uh, some some news that was expected probably from these teams since we've known it was going this direction for a while. But as you're seeing now, as we tape, there are big names being released, uh, the latest being Kevin Zeitler, former Browns offensive lineman. Uh, he's been released by the Giants, and it, I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. I mean, teams, there's a lot of teams that, that have a lot of cap space uh, to, to kind of clear before the start of the new league year. I saw one team, I, I can't remember which one it was, they were still $30 million over the cap uh, going into to Wednesday. Not a problem for the Browns. The Browns have a modest amount of uh, cap space going into the league year, but you're going to, you're going to see teams maneuvering and, and doing everything they can to clear as much as they can so they can be active uh, once the, the new league year begins next Wednesday. Yeah. And, and we're not just talking small contracts. We're talking big name players, premier players in this national football league that are going to be changing teams uh, in the next seven to 10 days. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's the middle class. I mean, that's the, that's the area that you're seeing a lot of uh, right now. I don't think, these names are too surprising, but it's a lot of guys who a few years ago, maybe even a couple years ago, they were big names in free agency. And the, these contracts were set up in ways that they were front loaded and, and gave the players their guaranteed money their first, first couple of years. And then at the back end of these deals, this is where the team has the control uh, and they're able to clear up the cap space. So it, it just seems like these kind of players are, are released every time this year. It just seems like more often than not, if it was uh, three out of five, that get released at this stage of their contract that's now gone up to four out of five, maybe. I mean, it's just, a, it's, it's a bigger number uh, because the teams, some teams really don't have any choice. Other teams are doing it just so they can have a little bit more flexibility going into next year. Coming up on the program today, we will hear from ESPN's Mike Clay. He will join us to preview free agency. Also, the debut of Nathan Zagura on the best podcast available draft edition here in 2021. We take a look at the needs for this Cleveland Browns team, free agency. Uh, I know it's not uh, it's not draft time, mock draft. We're not talking a lot about the draft this week and next because of free agency, but we do have our mock draft 1.0s out, and we will be talking about that as well. Back to the big story at hand, though, and that is NFL free agency. And uh, right now, the Browns have not made moves yet to re-sign a lot of their guys. Still talking to all of their players that are free agents, but none of those guys have inked yet, Gribble. And uh, in addition, the Browns also making some making a move on Tuesday cutting Adrian Claiborne uh, and and saving themselves a little bit of money, but really starting to thin out that defensive end room a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those that maybe wasn't too, too surprising, but now it's like all of a sudden that defensive end position that uh, I think we've all kind of joked about Andrew Barry saying not the, maybe not necessarily the biggest need. It's, it's definitely one that you circle uh, on on how you're going to address it, whether it be in free agency, the draft or or a combination of both, because uh, Porter Gustin is back with the team. Miles Garrett's back. Uh, and then uh, after that, you, you were wondering what, what else is going to be coming out with the Cavalry. So uh, Olivier Vernon is a free agent dealing with the Achilles tear as well. 
So it, there are a lot of names out there and it's just going to be interesting to see how you gauge the market. Do you go big with a, a Yannick Ngakwe or a Carl Lawson who could become free agents here in the next couple of days? Or do you patch it together with maybe a few mid-level signings, get some depth that way? I, I, th- I could see both strategies being deployed here, but clearly that, that position is so important. We saw how, how much it helped Miles when Olivier was playing at a high level. And, and really when Miles was hurt, to, to have a player that could step up and be uh, an elite pass rusher the way Olivier Vernon was for the Browns. So it, it's it's really, it's a vitally important spot that that certainly comes into the spotlight here in a, in a year that we're really focused heavily on the defense, no matter what, what you're talking about with the Browns and free agency in the draft. You know, I want to go talk about Port Augusta for just a second. The Browns on Friday did place that exclu- a tender on exclusive rights free agents Tight end, Stephen Carlson, defensive end, Porter Gustin. What exactly does that mean, Gribble, uh, in basic terminology that you can put together? Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost a given that these guys always come back because this is their option. You give them a tender, they can either take it or they can not play football. That's really the, that's usually the, uh, the situation that they face. So uh, it's one, basically one step above the control a team has over like a restricted free agent where you can tender a guy at that spot. Other teams can match and or maybe uh, put out offer sheets to give them better deals. And then those teams have to fork over a, a pick that, that matches with their spot. That, that doesn't happen with these exclusive rights free agents. These ones are basically a given every year. So it's, it, it's kind of a formality and you get to see uh, those guys back next year. And it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what I imagine both will have a very similar role on this team. And maybe you give Porter the shot to, to compete. I mean, he, the guys played hard. Uh, I think he earned his spot on the roster during training camp last year. And really when he had to play last year, I thought he played well. I, I think he he gave you what you needed out of that position and uh, a guy that truly not going to be outworked. I mean, the guy, the guy busts his butt uh, and, and is deserved uh, to, to kind of latch on with the Browns when, you know, when you sign with the team midway through the season, the way Porter Gustin did in 2019, you don't usually hang around that long, but Porter Gustin now going into his now second and a half season, basically third season with the Browns going in 2021. Great Porter Gustin story. Porter Gustin signs with the Browns. Uh, we have the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We always do the Cleveland Food Bank event. And Porter showed up. Like, Porter had just signed. Uh, they didn't even – I don't think they had a jersey for him yet to put on. You know, a lot of the players, when they show up to yeah. do appearances, they have a jersey. They didn't even have a jersey made yet. This guy walked in, and he he's not a small man. And, and everybody <laughs> was like, who's that guy? Well, it was Porter Gustin. So we get done. We're on remote with Browns Daily. I go to leave. Porter Gustin's standing out there. It, it's snowing. <clears throat> the sun's out. It's a typical <clears throat> Cleveland November, you know, yeah. November day. He's in shorts and, and a T-shirt. And, and I said, I introduced myself and I said, where are you going? He goes, um, I'm, I called an Uber. I don't know where I'm at <laughs> in relation to the, he stay, he was staying at a hotel near the facility. I'm like, cancel your Uber, hop in the car. We're driving. And I gave Port Augustine a ride. And now Port Augustine back with the team here in 2021. Very happy. I'm happy to see where he's come from to where he is now and the success that he's had and, you know, wishing him a lot more. Same with Steven Carlson, two guys that work really hard behind the scenes and, Happy to see those guys get rewarded and get brought back in a year where there is a lot of change going on throughout the National Football League. Yeah, two undrafted free agents uh, that uh, are going to be in, in position here to to really uh, latch on and, and try to earn a roster spot again for, for a third straight year uh, coming out as undrafted free agents. Now, this is how it works. So since they were undrafted free agents next year, I believe this is how it works. They will be restricted free agents next year. So it's one of those things like Tavier Thomas this year, restricted free agent, entered the league the same way. So that's that's kind of the path that these guys uh, are on now. It will be interesting to see a lot to get to. This is, as I mentioned, our free agency special and our free agency preview. You will hear from Zagura. He'll join us for a lengthy discussion on this team's biggest needs going into free agency and the draft. We'll break those down and a lot more. But right now, our, our featured interview of the week is with ESPN's Mike Clay. Gives us a little bit of insight on what he's hearing and how all of this is going to work here as we get closer to Wednesday, March 17th, 4 o'clock, the official start of free agency. Have a watch and have a listen. 
And here on the best podcast available, presented by our great friends at Key Private Bank. Happy now to welcome in Mike Clay from ESPN, ESPN NFL analyst, analytics analyst, all over the place. In general, prognosticator, it says uh, on your Twitter handle, my friend, uh, a regular on Cleveland Browns Daily, and happy to have him here on the best podcast available, free agent preview edition. And obviously, Mike, we're talking to you earlier in the week. A lot can change. A lot of things can happen. But so far, uh, the free agency machine and what teams are doing in preparation for free agency really starting to get into high gear here. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, at, you know, the day we're recording this, they're kind of hammering away at franchise tags, right? We're finding out who's getting the tag, who's not getting the tag. Uh, the deadline's coming up, so teams are kind of, uh, I don't want to say scrambling, but obviously at the last second here, we're kind of getting the information about who is getting uh, that tag. So we're getting some surprises, certainly. Uh, you know, no tag for Kenny Galladay uh, is a surprise. Marcus Williams getting the tag from the Saints is a big one. He's arguably the best safety on the market. Uh, the Saints, of course, uh, don't have much cap space, so uh, we didn't expect that from them. But nonetheless, it's kind of all coming together and setting the stage here for what's going to be a crazy free agency because, guys, we know the top names right right now that are going to be available, and there's a lot of them. But there's more to come because teams still have to get under the cap. They're going to still be cutting some players, and it's uh, it's going to really ramp up here in the next few days. Yeah, I'm just wondering how how, how different is it in the, in projecting a year where the cap is going down, and how is that affecting teams, and and could that affect how we view maybe next Wednesday? Could it maybe slow things down a little bit as teams are looking to sign guys? Yeah, I think it's a huge edge for teams that have a lot of cap space, for sure. I mean, just contracts are not going to be as high as they would in a normal offseason. So if you're sitting there and you're a team like uh, Chris Ballard and the Indianapolis Colts, where you have a ton of cap space, you're a good team, you're a contender, uh, and most of the other teams that have a ton of cap space are not very good right now, are not really in that mix to make a run at the Super Bowl, uh, you're in good shape. You, you have to imagine they're thinking, look, here's our chance. We're going to get a discount on some players. We might be able to get some star players on – one-year deals and really make a run at it this year. So I know Ballard, for example, is considered to be pretty uh, smart and conservative with money, but he's a guy I would not be surprised to see get aggressive and go after, uh, you know, a Kenny Galladay or someone like that. So uh, it's definitely different for sure. And it's, again, it's just going to be crazier because there are a lot of teams right now that are projected to be over the salary cap. They're going to have to get under that mark, especially if they want to sign the rookies and they want to make an impact signing or two here. Uh, over the next couple of weeks. Talking with Mike Clay from ESPN here on the best podcast available. And, and Mike, when when you take a look at everything and, and big picture wise, you know, we're all of this has been set in motion and we really don't know what the limit's going to be on the salary cap yet. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and we're recording this on Tuesday. It, it, it might change between now and, and when this podcast gets released on Thursday, but things are moving Players are getting cut, and yet we really have no idea what the max is going to be here. Yeah, I mean, there was chatter they might move the deadline for the franchise tag because we didn't know for sure what the uh, the salary cap was going to be. But I think all teams kind of have a ballpark idea of where it's going to be. So I don't think that's going to, you know, if it's, you know, for just for example, they think it's 182 and it's 182.5, like that's not going to make much of a difference. It's not going to swing a major decision, and it's not going to be a massive uh, gap between – projected it and, and what it ends up being. So uh, that's not, I don't think it's much of a story right now. I mean, once they, it could certainly move the deadline for a franchise tag, whatever uh, could affect the schedule for the off season a little bit, but I don't think it's going to really impact the planning for any team right now. You mentioned the Colts earlier, but I think the Browns are maybe a close second in terms of good teams with cap space. I'm just wondering what you think about their overall situation as, as the date uh, gets nearer and nearer here. Yeah, uh, really good offense work to do on defense. I, I don't think I'm saying anything crazy, right? I, you know, I think everyone would uh, was watch the Browns and has looked at that roster uh, based on who the free agents are, who the potential cuts are. That's the setup right now. They have nothing short of an elite offensive line. They're all under contract. They were terrific last season. They're road papers. They pass protected well. That's a great situation. Uh, even if they move on from David and Joko at tight end, you have a good one, two punch there. You paid Hooper last off season. Bryant was a nice, it looks like he's going to be a nice hit at tight end. OBJ's back at receiver, assuming he sticks around, which I expect that to be the case with Jarvis Landry. Maybe Higgins is back there. He's not going to be crazy expensive. I don't think 
the running backs terrific. We know the one, two punch there. And obviously Baker Mayfield took another step last season and maybe takes another step. And if that's the case, this team could really take off in 20, uh, 2021, obviously on defense. So a lot of holes there. Um, you have a few really good players. You could get really half of your projected secondary back. If, uh, Delpit and Greedy Williams are healthy. I know it's a big if, but if they come back strong, you know, those are high pedigree players who, if they're legitimate, good players or even solid players, it's going to be huge for that secondary. Um, and again, there's some other pieces in place, of course, for that unit. I've tweeted about this before. I think there's some potential for that unit with a couple savvy moves this offseason. So, you know, again, I'm not saying anything bold or crazy here. We know the attention is going to be on the defense for the Browns over the next month or so. Talking with Mike Clay from ESPN and Mike uh, on your Twitter handle at Mike Clay NFL, people can take a look at your unrestricted free agency cheat sheet, which you, you are constantly updating. And I mean, th- th- it, it, it's my Bible here. <laughs> there it is it, right Printed there, form. <laughs> right there. I've got it all out and about. Obviously the biggest needs that you mentioned on defense, linebacker, corner safety. If you take those three positions What's the strongest in free agency? What's the weakest in free agency? Uh, yeah, linebacker, corner safety. Uh, like I said, Marcus Williams is gone, so he's off the list. You still have some decent options there. Uh, corner's a little top-heavy. You do have a lot of options at linebacker. So, um, uh, again, it, they, I say a lot of options. They do drop off quick. They, they absolutely do. I mean, if you're looking at linebacker, Jayon Brown, Matt Milano, K.J. Wright, Kyle Van Noy was cut loose. That's a guy that can – uh, rush the passer on one down and be in coverage on the next play and then and then stop a run the next play. That guy does it all. So he's a really interesting piece for sure. Um, cornerback, uh, again, depends on Greedy Williams' health if they would go that direction. Certainly, you know, maybe they they look to the slot, something like that. But William Jackson is the top corner there with Shaq Rifton, Richard uh, Sherman, Jason Verrett, Patrick Peterson, guys like that, a lot of seasoned vets. Um, and you have some decent names. That's probably the deepest. If we're talking depth guys that you can go in and look at the 15th guy in the rankings and say, can he start as a number two on the perimeter? I think you could find that, whether it's a Desmond Trufant or an A.J. Boye or, you know, maybe even a, a Dunbar or Darby, someone like that. Uh, and again, you, you get some drop off at safety, but there's still some good players there, right? Anthony Harris has been connected to Cleveland for quite a while. John Johnson can make it out there. He was, he's been a really good, solid, underrated safety for the, the Rams the past couple of years, including their elite defense in 2020. Deron Harmon, Keanu Neal. Remember Keanu Neal, that guy we thought would be a, a superstar, uh, had some injuries and kind of leveled off a little bit, kind of dropped off in his play this past season. Uh, Trey Boston, Lee Cooker. I mean, there's a lot of names there at safety. So um, I, I think, uh, again, probably the most depth at corner, but you have a, a lot of quality options at all three positions. And again, there's more coming. There's going to be cuts. More players, uh, good players will be added to this group soon. Yeah, earlier today, Mike, the Browns uh, released Adrian Claiborne, and then you've got the uncertain situation with Olivier Vernon. I know pass rushing doesn't come cheap ever, uh, but what are some maybe more affordable options? And then who, who are the ones that are going to be really cashing in here uh, over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, and again, this is a position where there is a lot of talent. I already mentioned Kyle Van Noy is an option, a, a guy who could play over the all over the field, do a bunch of different things. But I mean, in terms of pure edge rushers, Shaq Barrett coming from Tampa, again, another player – who won't be franchise tagged because Chris Godwin was. Jadavion Clowney's out there. Yannick Ndokwe from Baltimore, Minnesota to Jacksonville. He's been in a lot of teams in the past year. He's out there. Carl Lawson, again, and he's, he's fourth on my list. And again, he's one of the, the better overall free agents out there. Bud Dupree in Pittsburgh, Leonard Floyd, Melvin Ingram, Carlos Dunlap, Hassan Reddick. He's a guy that's versatile as well. Had a good year. A uh, bit of a breakout year for Arizona this past season. Matt Judon, Trey Hendrickson coming from New Orleans. Um, you know, even uh, Romeo Okora, Tack McKinley, Jordan Jenkins. I mean, there, there's a lot of a uh, lot of depth at this position. Probably the most depth among maybe uh, interior defensive line is pretty good too in terms of depth. But uh, overall, position wise, edge rusher has a lot of depth, has a lot of options. And again, to your point, if they move on from Vernon, they're going to have plenty of options to bring in and, and kind of shore up that position opposite Miles Garrett. Mike, we appreciate the time. Continued success over at ESPN. Again, follow him on Twitter at Mike Clay NFL. Get his free agent cheat sheet today. Mike, appreciate the time and look forward to talking with you again soon, my friend. Always fun, guys. Take care.
Here on the best podcast available, presented by our great friends at Key Private Bank, it's time for him to make his debut, his draft season debut on the best podcast available. Zagura joins the program, host of CBD, host of Browns Live, host of Browns Video Projects galore. I could just keep going on and on. It would be like the time that someone was announcing Tiger Woods on the tee box and all his accolades and Phil Mickelson yells, all right, that's enough. Yeah, but you <laughs> left off, you buried the lead. Sometimes okay. staff writer for Gribs. Come on. Very important. And by the yes. way, very important because mock draft 1.0 from the three of us is out this week. So before we get into our free agency look, time to talk a little mock draft 1.0, which by the way, Gribs, a little challenging in 2021 when you pick 26 and have to learn a bunch of names and a bunch of different people. Said, we're Grips. getting older. We're yeah. moving up to grade levels. The, the assignments get harder. This All is right. this is we're at, we're getting our masters now. None, none yeah, of this bachelor graduate stuff. level. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. This is graduate level mock drafting. Gribbs. All right. Who did you take at pick number 26 and why? Well, I'm going with Zaven Collins of, of Tulsa. I just, I just think that it, I, I know everyone just likes to roll their eyes at the prospect of the, the Browns getting a linebacker in the first round, but I'm looking at it from this perspective. When we touched on it last week in, in, in the BPA, when I'm talking about position value and where the Browns are at right now, I, I like some of the pass rushers at the end of that draft, but I, I think that's a pick you make if you're looking a couple of years ahead. I think I'm looking at positions that can help me now. And I think if you get a linebacker at the end of the first round or even a safety, I think my, my next up pick was the, was the safety out of TCU, Trevon Morick. I think those are guys that can make an impact now for you as you try to get back to the playoffs and try to be even better in the playoffs. A pass rusher at 26, that to me is telling me you're developing the guy for the future. I mean, you, you can't just plug and play a pass rusher from the late first round in there. So I like Zayden Collins. He's got the versatility at that linebacker position. And I think you can keep supplementing that group with youth instead of splurging on any of these, these linebackers in free agency, which I, I maybe just don't expect the Browns to do this year. Zagura, what about you at pick number 26? Oh, mock draft guru. I certainly am not that, but I wanted to go with what group saying. Look, Zayvon Collins, the more I read about him, the more it, it feels like something that we might do. People are talking about off ball linebackers. This is a guy who can rush the passer and he can play opposite in certain pass, you know, rushing situations, but he's just a long athlete. And it reminds a lot of people of Anthony Barr when he came out of UCLA. And Anthony Barr, as we all know, has had a very successful career for the Minnesota Vikings, where a ton of our staff has come from. So they would be familiar with what that kind of a player can do for a defense. And so I think Zayvon Collins, the more I read about him, makes a lot of sense. Now, Gribbs mentioned a linebacker or a safety. I'm going to give you a guy who's a linebacker and a safety, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa from Notre Dame. And the reason I like him is because the NFL is becoming a game about speed. And that's what you hear the Browns want. We want speed and athleticism. And I don't know that there might be a better combination of speed and athleticism defensively than Owusu-Koromoa. He's a guy who you can play some at safety. You can play him at linebacker in a big nickel or a dime situation. And I think his athletic profile, and you think about what Joe Woods wants to do, Grant Delpit, Ronnie Harrison, and Owusu Koromora on the field together, I feel that gives him a lot of ability to disguise, a lot of athletic speed when we have to deal with Lamar Jackson and J.K. Dobbins and that Ravens offense, which we have to do, and what's going to be happening with Joe Burrow and the Bengals, that offense coming alive. So those are the things that we have to deal with and contend with, and I think the more guys you can get with speed, coverage, and pass rushing ability, the better, and so I think he might be a nice addition into that mix as well. All right, I tried to will a guy to us at pick number 26. I got a bad feeling he's probably gone midway through the first round, but corner J.C. Horn from South Carolina, you can never have enough corners. Never. Or never. Is it a stretch that Horn lasts this long? I said, absolutely. I'm definitely trying to will it into ex existence. At, at pick 26, again, are you drafting for need? You're drafting best player available. I feel like he takes care of both of those boxes in that situation, but he's probably the number three corner and we'll see how long he lasts, but um, definitely something to look at, but no matter what, it's clearly on the defensive side of the ball that all three of us are thinking grips. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even uh, – I'd have a hard time if you had to put me on the spot. What offensive player could the Browns take in the first round? Uh, I'd have to do some research because uh, that, that, that's not where my research has been focused right now. And uh, But after the first round, sure, a- anything's possible. But I, I just have a hard time going offense. And if you, if you think that there's an offensive player in the first round for the Browns, you might want to make a move back a little bit and you can maybe get that same player that way. I'm leaning defense and it seems like everyone else is. Yeah, no, I would agree defense with that. Is, and, it's our, go ahead. Say defense is our biggest need. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be defense. If it's not defense in the first round, it's got to be a speed demon wide receiver. That's really the only thing that I think is possible. Other than that, it's going to be defense. And, and the fact of the matter is it could come at any of the three levels of defenses. We have needs at the end. We have needs at the linebacker. We have needs in the secondary, whether it's a corner, a slot, a safety slot hybrid, hybrid like Morig you were talking about, a linebacker safety kind of hybrid, like I was talking about. A lot of options for Andrew Barry on defense. And of course, this is going to be shaped significantly, I would think, by what happens in the coming weeks in free agency. Yeah. And it's got to say, though, this is, this is, when's the last time we could go into the draft and the Browns had a good enough offense where we could say this first round pick has got to be on defense? Like, is this the first time in the new era we can say this? Yeah, definitely. And we're, we're basically running it back. I mean, you're starting off offensive line is back your tight end room all four of them look like they are going to be back your wide receiver room that's the one that has some questions whether or not Hollywood is back etc where you could see an adjustment but Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunter back Baker's back Janovich is back I mean you're basically running it back completely on offense and defense as we know we are not running it back (laughs) no no definitely not and for more on our mock drafts you can visit our website at clevelandbrowns.com Calm. We have that posted for you. Let's take our attention to free agency. This is the free agency preview on the best podcast available presented by our great friends at Key Private Bank. And Zagura, I will start with you. What is the biggest challenge facing this front office as we get ready for free agency 2021, less than a week away now? Well, number one, I think it's probably navigating an unknown salary cap at this point. We don't know what the final number is going to be. So that's going to be a challenge. And then it's the fact that you've got to make, you got to plug a lot of holes on defense. You know, offensively, we talked about, you're in very good shape there. You're going to look to add speed at the wide receiver position. But other than that, you know, you really can probably run it back by and large. You might be looking for a tackle, a backup tackle, uh, but you're in good shape defensively. A lot of it things to look at. You start on the defensive line. Sure, Billings is back. Ilario Ogunjobi is a free agent. You look, and so is Vincent Taylor, who played, I think, pretty darn well for you down the stretch. Got his hands on the ball that led to the interception in the playoff win over the Steelers. He blocked some kicks for you. And then defensive end now, Olivier Vernon is likely not to be with the Browns. And who knows if he's going to be able to play after suffering the Achilles injury late in the year. The Browns just released Adrian Claiborne. So holes along, along the line linebacker we've talked about that already that you want to bring somebody in the two guys who played the most for you at linebacker Malcolm Smith and BJ Goodson both unrestricted free agents and then you go on the back end of this defense you've got right now Denzel Ward coming back money Mitch free agent played 1225 snaps for you the most of anybody on defense and I certainly want him back I think we all do and hopefully that can be worked out Kevin Johnson who plays your your slot corner he's a free agent yes you get greedy back but you need four or five corners, which is why you took one in the first round. And I think the Browns could address this, you know, slot corner and free agency, as well as get an outside corner during the draft. And then at safety, the two guys who played the most for you again, Joseph and Sandejo, both free agents. So it's kind of navigating how, where do we put the money? Where can we find the bargains? Where is this draft deep that we can get with our two third round picks, some real value there on day two and kind of piecing that thing together. And we know Andrew Barry, he's got a plan. He's ready. I just think he's chomping at the bit to start to get into the execution because it's like those old pick a path book books when we were kids. You got to figure out what, what you're choosing first and then choose your own adventure. Next. Choose your own adventure. Oh yeah. Great books. Fantastic books. There was a football one that I used to play. Once I figured out how to win every time, I got pretty good at that one. <laughs> so Zagura asked, answered basically half of the question. Uh, biggest challenge. Zagura took on half the team as his biggest challenge and a few other things. Gribbs, what is the biggest challenge in your eyes? Yeah, I'll, I'll narrow it a little bit. And I'm going to say that the Browns are starting to have what I would call good team problems. And that's when you have good players and you're contending to win now because you've already proven that you 
uh, can win, and you've won at a high level last year. So you start to have good team problems, which means you have good players that you either want to keep for the sake of st- maintaining that stability, or with the Browns, you've got a narrowing window of, of cap space. No, the days are long gone where cap space didn't seem to be an issue for the Browns going into free agency. He's had so much of it. And now you've got this young core of players who you have to balance. Can I spend now on a player on defense or do I need to save some of this money for one of these extensions that I want to do here in the near future? I, I think most of the good teams with good team problems don't have a surplus of guys, young guys going up for big contract extensions. They're usually more established with a team full of veterans. And usually they're teams like the Steelers who you're trying to trim money everywhere. The Browns want to sign some of these guys to long-term extensions, but they're going to have to balance the, the, how they can make the team better in the short term by using some of this cap space. So th- this is the tricky balance that Andrew Barry has to play because uh, as tempting as it could be to spend a lot of this money to make your defense a lot better, you then have to worry about what are you going to do with Nick Chubb? What are you going to do with Baker Mayfield, Denzel Ward, Wyatt Teller? I mean, that, that's a lot of guys who you probably want to keep around for a while that you have to start making decisions on. And, and it, it, it shows you have to be a little bit more prudent with your money, even if you just have this X amount uh, going into to the start of free agency. And, and to follow up on that, and that's right. That's what I mean. It's kind of just the plan. How are you fitting this all in short term, long term? The money is that right now you look at two of the biggest needs for your team defensive end opposite Miles Garrett and corner. Those are expensive positions. Yeah. Those are going to cost money. And yet you also then have the Denzel and the Chubb and the Baker and why all the guys you mentioned, those coming up. So it is going to be a balancing act. I think what you look at is say, okay. The cap's going to be a little higher this year than maybe we initially thought. And then it sounds like if all the rumors are true of what this TV deal could be, it could blow up in 2022. So you might not have cap issues regardless in 2022. Nobody might have any cap issues in 2022. So it's preparing for that scenario as well. And look, I think defensive end, and I don't know if you agree, Gribbs, to me, the number one most important thing that needs to be accomplished this offseason is finding a defensive end opposite Miles Garrett. And now that can be signing one of these young guys who's 26, like a Carl Lawson or a Romeo Okora, a Hassan Reddick, who's still in his 20s. One of those guys that you say, or Yannick Ngakwe, so there's so many, Trey Hendrickson, there are a lot of options, but that you say, okay, this is my long-term guy. So I'm going to have bookends that are paid and we're going to go with it. Maybe we get a little discount because it's 2021 on that second bookend. Or you take a veteran who can still play like a Carlos Dunlop who was just released by Seattle. And if you have any questions about his ability to play, look what he did when he went to Seattle. He transformed their defense. Then you take a Carlos Dunlop and go back to what Grimms was saying. And maybe you take a pass rusher at the end of the first round saying, okay, in our, we like to go that NASCAR three defensive ends and pass rushing situations. So that rookie will be in there along with uh, Miles and, and say a Carlos Dunlop. And then next year, Dunlop comes off the books after his one-year deal, and we already have the starter ready to go with a year of experience in our system. All right. That being said, we have 16 unrestricted free agents. 16. That's quite a bit. But that goes back to last year, a lot of one-year prove-it deals, uh, which is kind of setting the trend for this year's free agency from a whole league standpoint uh, in terms of looking at where the league probably will end up going. 16 unrestricted free agents over under the Browns bring back five of them. No names. You don't have to, you don't have to give me names. Cause you know, we're talking about people and we're talking about players livelihoods, but do the Browns bring back five or more or less over under Gribbs? We'll start with you. I'm probably leaning less. And I, I think that that's probably would be the, the, the calculus all across the league. And I, I just think that that's, that I'm just following the norms of the league, even in normal salary cap times. I mean, it's just, it's just not a common, common thing you see to, to have that many and then ultimately bring a lot of those guys back. So I'll, I'll go less. I do think they bring some back though. I don't think you just let that whole group walk. Sigur. I think it's a pretty good number that you set, honestly, as I try to go through, because for example, a guy like Tavier Thomas now is an unrestricted free agent and fits into that group. And so there are guys now you'd say, well, wait a second. Why, if we wanted to keep these guys, why wouldn't we have brought them back already? Why haven't we signed anybody at this point when we could have before they hit the market? I think the market for a lot of the kind of players that we're talking about are going to, people are going to want to test it and say, can I do better? Other than, for example, Hollywood and Money Mitch. Those are the two guys that I think they could go out into the market and get 
decent money given the circumstances and the fact that they performed like starters and that their ideal roles with us are likely to not be starter roles. So take those guys out of the equation. I think a lot of guys will want to go out there and see, is there a team that wants to pay me more than the league minimum? If so, maybe they go, but there, I think will be guys brought back to our system after even a week into free agency when they realize okay, this is a good place for me. I'll come back on the minimum for one more year and we'll see if I can, you know, have a good season, blow up and then make money when the salary cap goes up in 2022. So I think it's a pretty good number. If you said, I would have liked you to set it at four and a half and then I would take the over to get at five. But I think five's in the, the number. When I went through the names in my head, I thought five was actually pretty good. Yeah. And I'll, I'll add to this. You're not, I don't think you'll hit five within the first week of free agency. No. So to build off that, I think, look at what happened last year with Richard Higgins. He signed the day after the schedule came out, which was the first week of May. So I think you could have a situation like that. I was actually listening to, I believe it was the Ryan or podcast with Albert Breer was on it, or, or maybe it was someone else, but it was one of those where they talked about free agency this year in the NFL may resemble what baseball's free agency has looked like over the last years where there may not be this just explosion of deals right away. This could be a lot more methodical because it's just a lot of litmus tests going on with players, with teams, everything like that. So I I do think if you hit that five or or more, it'll be maybe when you're rounding out your roster for whatever OTAs looks like. So well after the draft. Yeah. And I think a, a portion of that can be guys that can come in play special teams for you. And like I said, guys who are going to end up saying, all right, I'm signing a one year minimum deal. All right, let's have a little fun. I've given you 10 positions on this football team. QB, running back, wide receiver, tight end, offensive line grouped into one category. Defensive end, defensive tackle, linebacker, corner, safety. 10 positions. Each one of you will take a turn counting down the 10 most important positions for the Browns to address this offseason, either in free agency or the draft. So combined in the offseason – uh, the most starting important most positions. important or least important we're going least to most so okay. 10 to one okay gribble will start with number 10 once he gives us his you can't use it again zagura then would go nine I Gribble would go eight i'm, I'm working through this in my like it. Talk it out this. for the people it's good yeah. there we go i gotta talk it through live on a podcast it's great good. gribs number 10 most important position to the browns for them to address this offseason. That's easy. It's running back. You're fine. <laughs> maybe you've got maybe a, if that maybe I'm not counting the potential extension for Nick Chubb, but when it comes to 2020, you can just run it back with that same group for for another year. Maybe pick someone up late in the draft, undrafted free agent, give them a, give them a shot. But uh, you're as set at running back as any other team in the league right now. Number nine, Segura quarterback you got baker mayfield you got case keenum you're set with your top two and so i think that that is a position again of of great stability and i have a feeling we're going to go through this and then we're going to be start off with the offensive side of the ball and then we're going to finish on the defensive side of the ball but i think quarterback you're in you're in a great spot obviously you have to work out when to do the extension with baker mayfield but Going into this particular season, you know, we got to find, is there a number three quarterback? Kyle will let us here. Is there somebody that we like it as the number three quarterback? But when you think about we're trying to find who our number three quarterback is, that puts quarterback, that means quarterback is not a, a big priority to address. All right. While we're on the subject of quarterback, obviously Dak Prescott got paid earlier this week, got paid quite nicely uh, for a guy coming off a pretty serious injury. Uh, taken care of for the rest of his life, basically, <laughs> just by signing Generations his name. Generations are taken care of. Yeah. Of their by, by, and he's, oh, gonna, I mean, he's, he's got another shot. You go wild and crazy, and it's just your life. Yes. You know, uh, but as a Browns, does it make you nervous looking at what you're going to ultimately have to pay Baker Mayfield at some point? No, the cap, like I said, the cap is going to go up. I don't think Jerry Jones makes that deal without knowledge of, of where the cash is going to be coming from in the very short future. And frankly, Dak Prescott was, is one of those rare guys where an injury significantly helped his value because that team was dreadful without him. And they were, while they weren't winning early in the season, it was, certainly was no fault of his, but you could, it was a completely different offense. It was one of the most dangerous offenses in the NFL. And so, 
that proved his worth. And this is a case where, remember, they were talking about he wanted $30 million a year and the Cowboys weren't willing to do that? Well, now all of a sudden, you saw his value. The market reset itself for him, and now he breaks the bank. So it doesn't make me nervous because – you're only going to put that money out when somebody says to you, I'm worth it. And Baker Mayfield, 20 touchdowns, two interceptions down the stretch last year, 12 wins on the season. He showed you what he can be. And he's only going to get better. I think in this offense, as time goes on. Listen, I mean, we we've been wanting a franchise quarterback for decades and generations. Well, guess what? They cost money. Uh, So that's just something that people are going to have to wrap their heads around. It gets a little bit more difficult to manage your cap, but it is far more worth it to have a franchise quarterback and you have cap problems than it is to not have a franchise quarterback. We've experienced that. On with a countdown we go. Gribs, number eight. Now hopefully maybe things get a little more interesting. We've got the two big ones out of the way. I'm going with tight end with this one because I think it's another position where in theory you could just run it back. Uh, with that same group of four. I thought they performed at a very high level. I think big things are in store for Harrison Bryant. I also think that another year in the system, I think they can figure out ways to get even more production out of Austin Hooper in this offense. I I think that he was invaluable in terms of his blocking, but I I truly think there are more opportunities to get the ball in his hands and and get those numbers up the way they were with the Falcons. David Njoku is a a great third option. Stephen Carlson's a solid fourth. I mean, this group is pretty much set if you want it to be. I agree. And I even think David Njoku has a chance to really be take a big leap this year. I think he kind of earned some more opportunities with his blocking and he has an athletic profile in that room that nobody else has. So I think that room is great. That's what I would have said at eight at seven. I'm going to go shocker on the offensive side. I'm going to go offensive line because you're bringing back all your starters. Chris Hubbard, who is your top backup will be back. You've got now a bevy of potential backup interior offensive linemen and Blake Hance, who's going to stay here. You know, Michael Dunn, Drew Forbes is coming back. Colby Gossett coming back after opting out. Nick Harris. So you're talking deep there. The one question maybe is if Chris Hubbard's one of our backup tackles, who would the other be? You've got Alex Taylor here. Kendall Lamb's a free agent. He's one of the guys that could end up being part of the, the five or so that come back after he tests the market. And they say they certainly are open to bringing him back. They liked what he gave them uh, when he performed, when he played last year. So, yeah, I think offensive line, okay, we're worried about who is our second swing tackle. I mean, that's really where we're at headed into the season right now. Yeah, but don't forget, like, by the time we got to the playoffs last year and that came against Pittsburgh, we were on number three or number four. Listen, Joe Thomas was ready to go. The Hoff was ready. He's going to come down out of the suite in Kansas City. Relax. You're safe. Gotcha. Gribbs, number six for you. I, You know, I was, I've been thinking about this one a little bit, and I, I, was, I almost went defense with, with this one, but I'm going to stick on the offensive wide receiver because I, I still think no matter what, at the end of the day, you still have Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. And that is a, a, a good situation to have. I get that Odell's coming off an injury, but I think at the starting positions, you are fine. And then you have Donovan Peoples Jones coming up. So that is the group outside of that. You do have some questions. And I think you have a, an opportunity to not only bring back Higgins, but also, add someone that can maybe help you stretch the field a little bit more, maybe even help, maybe even add uh, even more of a, of a slot, kind of a true slot receiver in this, in this group, I think is a possibility. So I think there are areas to get better. I just can't quite put wide receiver ahead of any of the defense positions at this point. All right. Five offensive positions down. That means five defensive positions in the top five. Zagura, number five. I'll go interior defensive line that's the one I was wrestling with so I'm going to see you got your starters Sheldon Richardson who's played at a very high level and perhaps there's work you know restructuring that deal adding years to it changing when the money flows to Sheldon giving him some more guarantees so Sheldon on one side you bring back Andrew Billings who was basically started what 30 of his last 32 games with Cincinnati you've got Jordan Elliott who was your third round pick a year ago Uh, You can bring back Vincent Taylor. You can bring back Larry. I just think that's a room that's in pretty good hands. And as we really learned last year, it's a room that is kind of in some ways a two down room in this defense more often than not, because on third down, you're typically going to have three defensive ends out on the field. So I think that that room, if you had to go with what you have right now, you could start the season today. You'd be okay. Like you could go into season with that for sure. Gribbs, number four for you. Oof. This is where it's getting tough. Uh, there we go. It's about time. Man, I, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with safety. 
And I, I think that's because I like what you have in Ronnie Harrison, Grant Delpit, and Shardrick Redwine as your guaranteed guys coming back. I like the potential. Not a lot of snaps, not a lot of experience out of that group, at least in Browns uniforms. So I'm a little leery on saying this, and I definitely think the Browns could use a first-round pick on that safety out of TCU, Trevon Morgan. But I like the potential out of that group, and I, I think there's a player like a – I wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me to bring back, a, a, make an easy move and bring back a Carl Joseph uh, back onto this team. So I think there's simpler m- moves that maybe don't require as much discussion as some of these other positions. Number three, Mr. Zagura. Yeah, and just to piggyback on Gribbs, I would have said safety. I was wrestling with safety for four and five because obviously I like that duo. But in free agency this year, there are a ton of guys that you can bring in, to bring a veteran in that room. And Carl Joseph, generated a lot of turnovers and takeaways down the stretch and, and played pretty well. He's got familiarity, but to Quisky Tart who played for Joe Woods in, with the Niners in 2019 and played well is going to be out there. It's going to be reasonably priced Malik Hooker. You know, we like to take one year gambles on former first round picks. Maybe he's a guy that you take a gander at. And then there's some, obviously John Johnson, the third, who's a great safety that would really change things. So lots of ways to go there, but if you can roll with what you have and know that you're going to be able to easily bring another safety into that room from free agency that, is either a proven player in the NFL has familiarity with Joe Woods, or in some cases, both of those things will be true. Uh, I'm going to go third linebacker and people are going to say, well, we need to really improve our linebackers. Yes, we do. On one hand, on the other hand, I thought that position played better than a lot of people gave it credit for. Now you'd say, well, but BJ Goodson and Malcolm Smith are free agents. I think they could be easy to bring back. I can tell you from talking to the coaches as I have and coach Tarver, they are expecting a nice jump from Jacob Phillips in year number two. Uh, They loved his preparation, the way he mentally went and everything. Mac Wilson finished the season very, very strongly at his best game against Kansas city. And then there's Sione Takitaki who made huge leaps and strides in the second half of the season, in his second year, I'm sorry, in the league, especially in coverage, is one of the best run defenders in the league. So knowing that you just have that trio already as a core in a defense that's going to play two linebackers more often than not, and that if we do get that safety you're talking about, could be in some cases playing one linebacker, is it that critical to go out? Is it that important? I don't think so, which is why it's at three. And I think you really, if you're looking at this from a tier standpoint, I think linebacker, safety, defensive tackle are in their own tier. And then the next two positions that we're going to talk about are like significantly in their own as the most pressing needs facing this team. And safety is kind of lumped in there because they're looking for, I think, somebody who can play safety and play nickel corner and have that flexibility, versatility. So it kind of covers both there. But right, the top two corner defensive end, and we'll see what the order ultimately is. Those are the ones that need to be addressed to make this defense work. Gribble, number two. Obviously, this will leave Zagura with one response at number one, but yeah. number two. Uh, I'm, I'm taking corner, and I, I think it's because right now your one real certainty is you have one of the best corners in the league in Denzel Ward. You're bringing back Grady Williams, who you've got to be optimistic about. He had a, a solid rookie season, and he's back, uh, what he says, to full strength. So you're counting on him to be back as well. And and you've got the, the lingering questions about Terrence Mitchell and, and Kevin Johnson. I do think – if you let Kevin Johnson go, if Terrence Mitchell goes elsewhere, you've got to make some serious moves because two corners is not enough uh, in this league. And I think you definitely have a big opening on, and I think still, because I, I think even when you look at Kevin Johnson, he, he came in the league as an outside corner. I think there's still a big true need for a true slot corner. Uh, that is, it's just such a demanding position to play. And I, I think that a lot of teams are looking for slot corners. So I, I think that you got a lot of competition for adding truly a, a special skill set that only a few players have and, and can master. So I, I think you've got a couple decisions internally, and then you've got to fight with all the other people externally to get the depth you need at, at corner. Cause it, you just need, uh, you need like six guys. And and I think that the, so the Browns probably have to add a, a few guys. I think MJ Stewart, you liked what you saw from him coming back uh, near the end of last season. So You've got a couple options, but I just think it needs some work and, and some decisions have to be made before you really attack that market. Yeah, look, the girl? The matter is availability is the one ability that our top two corners have not demonstrated on a consistent basis to be able to possess. And so you do need those guys. And there are a lot of good slot options, I think, in free agency this year, like true slot corners on the market. This is an excellent cornerback draft. So it wouldn't surprise me at all to see the Browns say, all right, let's bring back a guy like a Money Mitch. 
or, or a Kevin Johnson to, to work on the outside. Let's, dr- let's sign, you know, a good slot corner. Kwan Williams, a former Brown comes to mind as a guy who played with Joe Woods in 2019. Also has been here in Cleveland, Troy Hill, who was very good with the Rams. There are a lot of them. Brian Poole with the Jets. There are a lot of these kind of slot corners. Uh, King, who was traded from the Chargers to the Titans, that would fit that bill. You can pick up a guy in the draft. I just think you're going to need multiple guys. MJ Stewart has inside outside flexibility, but he was inconsistent. He'd be the first one to tell you he was inconsistent. And so you hope in it with another year in the system, he's better. But AJ Green, could he be a guy that emerges as maybe your fourth outside corner this season? So there are a lot of different ways to go, but I do think this is a position that needs to be addressed. And then that brings us to number one, which is defensive end. And it's because Right now, you're starting, you don't have a second starter. And that's no disrespect to Porter Gustin, who, you know, played well when given the opportunity. But for this defense to work the way they want it to work, you want three really good pass rushing defense events. And so getting that main guy opposite Miles Garrett, that's one. You've got Gustin. You've got Curtis Weaver, who I'm told he has his body in tremendous condition, all-time leader in sacks from the Mountain West Conference. He's an intriguing guy. It's like basically adding a draft pick to that mix. He was a fifth rounder for the Dolphins last year. They waived him. We got him. They're excited about him. I will say that. But I think they view, the Browns view him as a sub package pass rusher. So you still need that other guy that's going to be able to hold up against the run. You need that other guy that's going to be opposite miles and take advantage of those single teams. And I think there are a lot of ways to go in free agency, whether that's a veteran or a younger guy that you think is a long-term solution. But when you look at our starting lineup, you could trot anything out there currently on this team, except for, in my opinion, the number two defensive end opposite miles Garrett. I mean, even defensively with doing nothing, free agency of the draft, defensively in a nickel situation, you would go Miles, uh, Billings, we'll call it Sheldon Richardson, then that position, linebacker, you could have Jacob Phillips and Taki Taki and Mac, any combination of those three corners, you'd have Denzel, Greedy, MJ Stewart, who's played league, Ronnie Harrison, Delpit. Like you could start the season with that, but sure, you want to improve some places, but you, I don't think you can start the season saying poor Augustin or Curtis Weaver, are our, our starting defensive end opposite Miles Garrett. Yeah, definitely something to watch here over the next few days. Teams can start uh, courting free agents on Monday. Free agency starts St. Patty's Day, 4 o'clock. Have a shot, a beer, sit back and watch the madness all unfold. Uh, real quick, one last thing. One wish for the Browns to get in free agency. Zagura, go. He one. One Zagur. Does not be named. If you know, you know. You know, you know. Gribble, one wish. So I'm not going to give a specific player on here, but I want finally, at last, to do addition by addition by addition and make it subtraction for another team in our division. That means I want to get a free agent from one of these AFC North teams and have it and, and let them see their player on the Browns twice a year, whether that's Carl Lawson, whether that's Bud Dupree, whether that's Matthew Judon, guys that you know are good players that you can now lure to your situation that is better than their situation. And finally, let other teams show that you can get even more out of those players than they can. I don't, I'm not, I don't have too many, maybe Mike, Mike, Mike Hilton. Hilton. My out of head. out of Pittsburgh, I mean, there, there's a lot of guys in this division that are going to be free agents that aren't going to be playing for these teams anymore. I would just like one or two of them to be playing for the Cleveland Browns in 2020. I like it. All right, that's going to wrap up our free agency preview. Special thanks to the Z for making a guest appearance and cameo without paying the cameo fees. Thanks to Andrew Gribble for all of his hard work. And of course, Jeff McDaniel behind the scenes. A reminder next week, our podcast will be a fluid one, just like Mac Wilson, based on free agency and what the team may or may not be doing. So keep it locked here to clevelandbrowns.com or the Browns mobile app for our next episode. Make sure you like and subscribe today to get this episode. Log on to clevelandbrowns.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe today to the best podcast available. You can also check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Browns. For Andrew Gribble, for Nathan Zagura, I'm Jason Gibbs. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the best podcast available presented by Key Private Bank.